Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. Thank you all so much for tuning in and today I'm coming at you guys from the Atelier Cologne Boutique in Brooklyn, New York and I am joined by one of my closest friends, a member of the fragrance community, Evan. So Evan, thank you so much thank for you. having me here. Thank you for having me on here, I'm super excited. And well, the pleasure is all mine. And today we're going to be taking a look at two brand new releases from the house of Atelier Cologne. But before we get into the video, I just want to urge my viewers at home, please don't forget to subscribe. This way, whenever I do release new content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about searching anything up or missing any content. And don't forget to stay tuned until the end of the video. This way you can find out how to win yourself a sample of each one of these brand new, never before smelled fragrances. Released in August. So I know that the earliest edition of an Atelier fragrance was released back in 2010 and they currently have over 30 fragrances in their catalog. So I was wondering, Evan, could you tell us a little bit about um, Atelier Cologne, how did the name originate, where did it come from? Definitely. Um, so Atelier Cologne was started by uh, Sylvie and Christophe, um, they're a couple and um, they're, um, they live in both um, France and New York, so they kind of go back and forth. Um, so we had this dream of starting a fragrance company inspired by Cologne. Um, I'm sure you know Cologne. Um, it's uh, it's inspired by 4711, right? Uh -huh. um, the uh, Italian perfumer went to Germany, got homesick, created a fragrance that was citrus-based, your mind of Yeah. Um, that's and that was 4711, you know. Um, so that's kind of where it started. And so Cologne. Um, it's classified as like a citrus-based fragrance that's really fresh and easy to wear. Mm -hmm. That's what we're all they, about. Atelier means workshop in French, so we're the workshop of Cologne. Um, so all of our fragrances have a very prominent citrus note in them. Okay. All of them, including the two new ones. Um, the two new ones that we have coming out that will be coming out in August um, in, I believe, Bergdorf and Neiman Marcus are going to be exclusive to, um, as well as our boutiques here. Okay. Um, but those two new ones are called Camellia Interpede and Emerald Agar. Um, once again, agar, you think food, and um, the whole thing is like, how do you make food fresh? Yeah. You know, how do you make, um, just how do you make ingredients like that, like leather, how do you make it fresh? And that's kind of what Atelier is about, is like taking those ingredients and making them fresh, um, have a citrus note in them, and have them really easy to wear. And I think with all of our fragrances, you really see that, yeah. and with these, you'll see that as well. So the first fragrance I'm going to introduce um, you guys to, and Steven, is um, Camellia and Turpie. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spray it. I'll let you. Okay, sounds good. This is a first impression for uh, for Stephen. Right there. Um, so this one is actually inspired by um, Amelia oh, Earhart. Wow. Um, <laughs> Amelia Earhart, uh, the, the famous pilot, female pilot. Um, there's a story behind it. It's about adventure, um, and these two fragrances are actually supposed to be released together because. Um, uh, this is about you know this is let's say Amelia Earhart's fragrance. The next one's going to be wow. the, um, her uh, you know love yeah. interest. Um, so they're both inspired by that. So this one's inspired by Amelia Earhart and just adventure and you know that kind of figure. Yeah. So, what, so what do you think about it? Well, I have to preface my first impression by saying I love Italia Cologne and I have three of them. I have Cedra Atlas, I have Venetian Sensei, and I have Cedrat and Bronx. And I love their interpretation of just taking citrus and freshening something up. And I remember smelling gold leather for the first time and thinking to myself, how could they freshen this up? But surprisingly, it's boozy, it's fresh, you make it's it citrusy, yeah, the spice. make it yeah. rum. So there is a freshness to it though, which is interesting. Yeah. It's so good. And for this one, I think of Camellia. And I know the tea plant, Camellia sinensis, green, white, black, and oolong. And I smell it and it has this almost like fresh citrusy herbaceous quality to it. It's super friendly, super inviting, but very accommodating. I think it's a beautiful scent. It, really. it really is. Camellia leaf. Um, the camellia flower has no scent to it. Okay. Um, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, there's no scent to it. So you have to use the leaf. Um, and that's what we do and it's used to make like green tea, things like that. So it definitely has a tea smell to it. Yeah. Um, you're also yes. getting iris in there. Um, which I'm sure, like the iris, we use the roots. Um, iris is a very expensive ingredient. Um, it's extreme, it takes extremely long to use it. You have to let it cure on the ground for a while, and it's very expensive. Um, so the iris, um, which Jen actually picked up when I first got yeah. that's the, one of the first things she mentioned was iris. It's a, so it's a really good nose. <laughs> there's also um, lemon and bergamot, in this, which is the citrus. So the note breakdown for Camellia Intrepid are the top notes are lemon from Sicily, bergamot from Calabria, nutmeg from Java, which is in Indonesia. The heart notes are camellia leaves from China, iris butter from Morocco, violet leaves from Gras, which is in France, and the base notes are Turkish rose, Turkish rose absolute, white leather, and amber. Um, one thing that um, I didn't notice until someone pointed it out to me um, that I think is kind of cool to show is um, there's kind of a smokiness in this fragrance, and maybe you can pick it up after you smell it. 
Um, what it is, yeah. is okay. there, there's leather, white leather in there. Yeah, so the, um, the smokiness in there I think is a really cool um, little touch. And um, it's just a, it's a pretty complex fragrance in my yeah. opinion. And I was telling you, it's like, it has this freshness to it. Um, you know, which is what a Atelier clone's all about. Um, and Jerome Epinet is, um, he's the perfumer behind this. And um, he does all of Barbados fragrances. And oh, he does, yeah, and he does 80% of ours. He does everything that's not citrus. So our oh, basic wow. citruses, like our orange and things like that, he didn't do. Like he did your Roseanne on them, your Better Birthday Towel, things like that. Yeah. So he does a lot of our fragrances and um, uh, what's different is like, you know, with Barito, it's just a, a different brand, a different idea of fragrance. You know, for us, he's really close with Sylvie. Okay. Um, they work really close together to create this. So it's Sylvie's vision. Um, she's really in the creative process. And so um, these are completely different than Marito, the smell. Yeah. Not better, not worse, in my opinion. You know, I love all fragrances. And yeah. I know you do as well. So the viewers, um, just very different. I totally didn't know that. And uh, I guess with a few exceptions, like maybe Belle d'Afrique and Vetiver Fatale, they have some no, similarities. Uh, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think anything that I've tried from uh, Atelier, with the exception of those two, I can create an overlap with Vireto. No, definitely, and I think, yeah. Uh, what, one thing that I love about this brand is that they do offer a wide variety of different fragrances and they attract yeah. such a, a, a wide clientele. Yeah. And um, I, I'm really interested in Chameleon Trepidé because, or I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing that, but... Yeah. Only the French <laughs> <laughs> I can say But that. it does, for, like initially it reminded me a little bit of Santal 33 by Le Labo. Okay. And I guess it's maybe the papyrus note um, with the tea note, it has a similar nuance to it. But this is a little bit on the softer side, it's not as aggressive. Mm -hmm. So I think that what, what that does is it works in this fragrance's favor because it, it's uh, a more wearable fragrance. And uh, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Yeah. Really cool story. And uh, this is 18% concentration. 18% concentration. Um, <laughs> we, we have this thing called Cologne Absolute. And um, that's what we put on all our bottles because Cologne Absolute, it's basically a new genre of fragrance that Sylvie and Christophe created. It's, you know, it, it takes the essence of Cologne, um, you know, the citrus, the things like that. And um, basically the concentration is so high, you know, like, you know, most of the time when you have a fragrance pyramid, it's a pyramid, right? Yeah. They have the base notes, give most of the, mo the majority of the fragrance is the base note and then the middle note and the top note. You know, yeah. that's, that's why at the very top it's a small, it's a small little triangle Cluster, yeah. because that's where the least amount of, like that's the least con amount of concentration, I'm not sure really how to say that. Of the oils. Exactly, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, with us, it's kind of like an hourglass, okay? So with the top notes, you, we have a lot of top notes. We put a lot of citrus in this thing, and that's uh, I never thought of the, it yeah. Like so that. Yeah. so, and then the heart notes are a little bit you know we kind of um, bring it down a little bit, mm -hmm. and then the base notes we add a lot of that as well. So it's like an hourglass, and um, so it's different. Yeah, and it's we call it Cologne Absolute. It's basically long-lasting citruses. That's our goal. That's really cool. If that makes sense. Um, we don't use any. We we hardly use any synthetics. Okay, we have. I'm not going to say we don't use it at all because. Um, we, you know, we, there are a few things in that you, we have to use synthetic, you can't yeah. go natural. Yeah. Um, but I'd say 90, 95% of our fragrances are raw materials. Some are 100%, um, you know, raw material based, no synthetics. A few, there's some, you know, a small amount of synthetics yeah. in there. But um, all of our citruses are natural. Mm. If it's found in nature, we like to use it naturally, yeah. basically. That's kind of how we look at it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of just a little, you know, background of, of the Atelier, yeah. the Cologne Absolute. Um, the goal is long lasting citrus. So I'm really excited to try the Emerald Agar. Yeah. So that one. Um, so as you, you know, as all of you know, Agar, you think oud, right? Yeah. Um, what's funny is that when I um, asked uh, my boss about this, I saw it on his desk, and I was like, I was like, I want to smell that. He's like, yeah. Okay. And I'm like, Agar oud, right? And he goes, Well, you know us. We're never gonna do the true oud fragrance. Yeah. Why is that? What's fresh about about oud really? Not mean nothing. <clears throat> and it com that completely goes against everything we're about. <laughs> so um, this is not like your true, you know, Montal y yeah. kind of ouds or things like that. It's it's a different take on it. Okay. Which which is cool. So let's go ahead and cool. Ooh, I'm excited about this. Yeah, it's it's I can smell it now. It's it's yeah. a different um it's a different take on it, which I, I really like. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what I can say is that the, the oud is in there, mm -hmm. but just like the leather, you guys managed to find a way to clean it up. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. What that is, is it actually, the oud is like, you know, normally very warm. We offset it with eucalyptus. 
which is very cool. I was gonna way. say there's a green quality, mm -hmm. and I don't know if I was thinking emerald, like the name would imply. Okay. But then as soon as you mentioned eucalyptus, yeah. it's like yeah. So it adds this like coolness to it, which makes it kind of you're able to wear it year round, which is really nice. You can wear it in the hot weather. I mean, technically, yeah. like someone brought up a good point to me. I was like, you know, you can't really wear oud in the summer. Someone's like. <laughs> Where you know where's the most popular like in the Middle East, right? Yep. Say? Yeah. They wear it's hot. It's What's the climate like? like there? Yeah. And they wear oud. They're like so one, one person was like, you know, you should wear oud in the summer. That's what it's meant to be. And I was like, wow, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, and this is definitely one you can wear year round. Um, no, no problem in my opinion. Um, and one thing I want to say about about atelier is, um, I always say people tell people you can never overspray atelier. Um, that's not our goal. Our goal isn't to be this super cloying, beast mode fragrance. Yeah. Um, what's what's easy to wear about that? Not much. You know what I mean? Cologne, fresh, easy to wear, citrus based. Um, so that's you know you can spray yourself ten times with this and know that you know it's going to project um, good, but not crazy. And the longevity is good. Um, is is very good. Yeah. But nothing is cloying about this, which is really nice. It's it's not your cloying food. Yeah, Basically. and what I was gonna say is, you know, I don't ever recommend blind buys. I, n I never advocate that. But if you were to blind buy, say, samples of a scent, um, Atelier Cologne would certainly be the way to go. Yeah. Because they all have a pleasant, friendly, unassuming nature about them. Absolutely. Um, everything we have is, um, like, in my opinion, it's it's a different kind of niche. We're a different kind of niche. Yeah. Most ni niche, like, if you think of, um, you know, like, Maltals or even Memo, for example. Um, to me, Memo, yeah. it takes a certain person to like Memo. Yeah, they're bold. They're bold. Ours, I mean, you get people who, your everyday person can appreciate these scents yeah. and like them and wear them and be comfortable wearing them. Same with your fragrance enthusiasts. Yeah. And one thing about it today is they're so clear um, when you smell them, you really pick out the ingredients. Okay. There's one note in there um, that is it's a cool note in there, um, and I want to see if you pick it up. And it's, okay. I'll say it's, it's a flower. There's two flowers in here. But there's one that um, is kind of it has a very um, important role in this fragrance. Actually, they both do. The violet? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say, either violet, and because there's a little bit of sweetness, maybe a mortel. Well, um, you know, what's I mean, it's it's complex. I mean, okay. it, you know, it, it really is. is. Um, <clears throat> And what's weird is the flowers, they kind of offset each other and give it a different take, but it's, um, w what's the most common, um, uh, pairing of oud, really? Rose. Rose. So yeah. there's rose in here. Gotcha. Um, but it's, it's offset with geranium. So it makes the rose oh, really green. okay. It, it gives it the greenness. So the notes of mood agar are, the top notes, um, bergamot from Calabria, angelica from Siberia, black pepper from Vietnam. The heart notes are geranium from Egypt, Turkish Rose Absolu and Eucalyptus from China, and the base notes are Agarwood from Malaysia, Santal Mysore from India, and Gaiapwood from India. And the concentration again is 18%. Um, once again, Camellia is um, inspired by Amelia Earhart. Um, this one is inspired by her love interest, um, who's an author and an adventurer. And okay. um, so these are kind of meant to be released together. Kind of like Rose and Onim but Berkeley Top. Mm. Those, um, it was like a spy chasing a jewel thief. That's what Better Bird, Better Bird's spy, the jewel thief is Rose and Onim. They're meant to be released together. I didn't know that. Very similar, um, or same with these are meant to be released at the same time um, in August, I believe. Okay, so cool. Yeah, very cool. So, uh, so what are your final thoughts on uh, on the Agar ones? What do you, what do you think? I think it's incredibly pleasant. I think you guys found a really sort of ingenious way to clean up agarwood. Mm -hmm. It's not musky, it's not musty, it does not um, evoke BO. It's just super clean, very wearable, very inoffensive. But again, it still packs a punch and it's still yeah. bold and it has its own unique personality to it. And I love the interplay of the rose and the other ingredients. I think they work really well to sort of augment uh, the oud note, but to not necessarily give it the spotlight. Yeah. So Evan, I, I want to thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to sample these two brand new scents. They are coming Absolutely. out in August. Uh, yeah. But now, I would like to tell our viewers at home how they can enter the giveaway. Yeah. To um, be one of the first to sample these uh, two brand new fragrances. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I've been pushing with my company to get into the fragrance community a lot more. Yeah. Um, and uh, they finally were like, after me, pushing and pushing, they're like, <laughs> finally, like, you know, 
do your thing with the fragrance community. Okay. So, um, you know, I, was, I got the okay to be able to give um, some samples out. So the first thing you can do is, um, before these are released, you can come into the Brooklyn Boutique, um, usually at Cologne Boutique on um, Atlantic Avenue, which is where we are right now. Um, come in and um, we'll give you a free sample of the Emerald Agar and Camellia. Cool. We, don't have, we don't have official samples made, so we have to make it for you, but you will definitely get one. Just come on in and say, you know, you watch this video. Mm -hmm. You can also actually get it in the Nolita Boutique as well, um, which is on Elizabeth Street in, um, in Manhattan. Yeah. Soho area. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the first way you can get the samples. The second way is um, if you email me, which we will put, I'll put my email down below. Um, down below. Um, the first 30 people to email me um, with your address, because I'm going to be mailing these samples to you, um, I will mail you a sample of each. Cool. Um, once again, we're we don't have official samples, so it's going to be we're going to be hand doing these. But um, I wanted to give the viewers some kind of exclusive. You know, um, you're the, really the first person outside of the company and like press to smell this. Yeah, and I feel very honored, and I want to thank you once again for giving me that opportunity because these are two fantastic scents. I can see them doing really, really well for your company. I can see them, you know, selling really well. So, and I want to thank you once again for extending uh, this opportunity to my subscribers. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, you know, you're one of the people who got me into fragrance. So it's like I, I feel like, yeah, I, I'm honored to have you do this. And um, for the viewers, you know, like I know if I was watching, you know, video, I had a chance to do this. I think that's a really cool opportunity. Yeah. Um, so do that. Just email me with your address and say you're interested in the samples. You saw the video and. Um, we, we, we may wait about a week and a half to send out the samples, but you will get it. I will keep in contact with you. And please, if you have any questions, you can always ask me as well, um, and I can answer anything for you. Um, and yeah, I mean, thank you again yeah, for, no, uh, thank for you. doing this. Absolutely. The pleasure is all mine, really. Definitely. Awesome. All right, guys, so there you have it. 30 people, the first 30 people to email the email down below with your um, address, your contact information will be the first to re uh, receive a sample of each one of these. So guys, thank you so much for watching, Evan. Thank you so much for having me thank here. Much. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe for future videos, top tens, giveaways, unboxings, and a lot of other fragrance-related content. So on that note, I smell well so you can smell good, and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care.